I'm a dude playing. In the Universe at War community, there's recently been discussion about the potential for a community patch to be online okay. I won't explain all of that, it's convoluted and we don't know if it's possible yet. But of course, if there's potential for a community patch that goes online, balance is a big concern. So I wanted to throw my hat in the ring to show what I think some good balance changes could be. I won't have thought of everything, and there are certainly ideas that I've got here that won't be good, and ideas that I've not thought of that will be good. But this is just going to be my two pence for people to think about. Simply put, these changes don't hope to shake up the meta too much, but rather fix severe, drastic problems, and make things a bit more viable elsewhere. So. First of all, Mirabelle minus 10% speed. She's way too fast. She just is. She's impossible to pin nearly, and she's very, very hard to kill. Snipe no longer pierces. It's dumb that she can hit three hard points on a walker. We all know it. We've all seen it. It's absurd, and it's not okay. No longer crushes infantry. This is mainly aimed at architects, because it just defines the Novus versus Masari matchup. In exchange, however, she'll get her snipe cooldown reduced by 10 seconds and missile barrage reduced by 10 seconds. That might be a bit too much, maybe she doesn't need the cooldown reductions, but if she's not going to be shafting walkers of one good snipe, she does need a bit of help elsewhere, because Novus do need to worry about that walker in the 1v1. So this is my idea to kick things off, to simply see how it goes. I think this is a net nerf. Founder's own bot spawn now takes a thousand money from resource piles rather than destroying all of them. There's a community ban on resource griefing with the founder. We don't do it because it's really dumb that you can just wipe out like 20k's worth of resources like that for two own bots. So now it drains a thousand money. This makes it a valid play. You can still go up to the enemy and you can still take their money, but it's not instant. So if you catch him, they paid for it big and it wasn't worth it, but it's still a valid strat. And in exchange, he regenerates in speed mode. Bit dumb that he doesn't regenerate in speed mode. Should probably regenerate less, perhaps, but he should regen in it. 18% health patch is now delivered in a relative percentage to each individual structure or unit's HP. This is confusing, let me explain. Right now, if your Mirabelle is at 1% and you pop the 18% health patch, she'll go up to 19%. That's stupid that you can get nearly the full benefit from this patch without it being active. So now, if Mirabelle is on 50% HP and you pop the patch, she'll gain 9% HP. Or if she's on 30%, she'll gain 6% HP. This means that you have to walk into the fight with the patch already prepared if you want the full value. And you can still pop it if you see Mirabelle's about to be in danger. There's potential for that still. This would just be a slight nerf. Spectrum Cycle has a two minute duration. It's so impossibly hard to make any sneak plays against Novus when they have just passive invis detection. The other races have to work for that and Novus is just, I'll just take a patch. Admittedly they only have two patch slots. Maybe this is an over nerf, but I think this would be a good start and they would have to cycle their patches a lot more. This is mostly aimed at the 1v1. Optimized collection passive bonus down from 35 to 25. Minor touch to Novus Eco. This probably doesn't change much, honestly, because they just have so much money anyway, and they get money so fast, but it's a small touch that doesn't hurt. Flow dodge bug fixed. When Novus units are going into flow, they are invincible before they even enter flow. This leads to really stupid situations where you're winning a fight and then they just become invincible, and then they just zip out. That's not okay. That's really not okay. That should not be a thing. In addition, units cannot enter flow if immobilized by stun or just being unable to move, such as with the Dark Matter Storm. It's silly that they can do a movement thing when they're stunned or not able to move. That makes absolutely no sense. That makes no sense. Why is that a thing? So that would no longer be a thing. You, there's no more super weaponing a certain Novus army that goes and also getting a good stun that they just zip out of. 
It doesn't affect much, but it affects mostly Masari versus Novus. Definitely a buff to that matchup, but I think that's just healthy for the game. Redirection turrets can now return one less projectile at a time. Maybe an over nerf but it's a small nerf that I would like to see. Maybe it's too much. That one is definitely up for debate. Now this one might be a bit controversial. Novus passively removes virus every 30 seconds from every unit and every structure with power. The reason for this is virus in the Novus mirror is toxic. I'm not a Novus player, but I know how frustrating it is to deal with. Novus doesn't have a good answer. They have to shut down their whole army to deal with virus? It's just stupid. It shouldn't be a thing. Maybe this could be a patch. Maybe this could be tied to the tech tree. But in some capacity, this should exist. Nova should have some sort of answer to virus. Maybe even make it so it takes a science center. But it certainly should be a thing in some capacity. Blackout bomb from Blade Troopers duration reduced from 8 to 5. Minor nerf doesn't really do anything, it just means that players are going to have to chain their bombs a little bit more rather than just spunk 5 down and forget about it. Probably doesn't need to be a thing honestly, but I think it's a small nerf that doesn't hurt. Next we have Hierarchy. Now this is going to get a lot of hate I'm sure. Value of all instants reduced by 30%. Reapers harvest 20 a second instead of 18. So. We all know Hierarchy is broken on maps with way too many instants, particularly cows. And we know Hierarchy sucks on maps where there are no instants. So this smooths that curve a bit. Instants are still valuable, you'll still want to go for them, but they're less good so Hierarchy won't be insta-broken on a lot of maps. And on maps that don't have instants, they are much stronger. That's roughly a 10% boost to their economy. Actually, it's like 11%-ish when there's no instance, which is significant. That's a lot of money, especially for Hierarchy, who wants to hit certain break points very often. They want to hit enough for that Walker plus hard points, and that's a very big break point. I think this is a net buff. I think this is absolutely a net buff. Now has two lasers, one for harvesting, one for fighting. When a Reaper drone is being harassed, you have to choose between the Reaper drone fighting back, in which case you'll make two money a second, which is pathetic, or sucking up resources until it dies, or selling of course. This would remove that conflict of interest and allow you to harvest money whilst the Reaper is still defending itself. And that way, there has to be a real commitment to harassing a Reaper, Unless you take air. I still want Hierarchy to be somewhat weak to air, though, as I'm sure you've already read, Arc Turrets now baseline will be a thing in my ideas. But I think this is just going to remove that conflict of interest. The second laser would not generate money. I should state that. Cannot be used to generate money, it's just a think of it like a little turret on top or something. Glyphs now have a barrier that blocks five instances of damage to kill. Damage instances do not reduce money refunded upon sell if some are used active from the point the glyph is started. This is mostly aimed at the mirror match, because monolith glyph sniping is toxic and so is Orlok shelling. There has been some talk about Orlok shelling having a range limit, and I think that would potentially work, it wouldn't be a bad thing, but I think this will just be best off for monolith sniping in the mirror. Actually I remove monolith sniping in my suggested changes, so if that's not a thing, then I think this barrier would be a good idea. It also makes it slightly harder to snipe glyphs and also give the hierarchy player a chance to sell things before the glyph has taken too much damage. And they don't get insta-killed unless you've already got multiple units in place. Stuff like figments, ownbots, sources will still snipe it quickly, but things like disciples, conquerors, uh, corruptors would break through it very quickly. Things like that wouldn't kill it that quick. I think that's just a good idea, although maybe it's a bit of an overbuff, not sure. Monoliths can no longer attack unless you have Assault 2, cost reduced. Again, Glyph Sniping in the mirror, that's all this is aimed at. The cost reduction is to make up for it no longer having that attack utility until Assault 2. Simple as that, and then it becomes a much more cost effective scout. Arc Turret's now baseline. I don't need to explain this. Long story short, this dumb hierarchy has to tech to have anti-air. That's really dumb. 
VisOps reveals a massive area of the map, such that it is global vision if in the middle of the map. Now has stealth detection in that revealed area. Visual Optimizers is perfectly balanced in a 1v1. If Hierarchy gets to VisOps, you deserve to lose most of the time. In team games, VisOps is massively broken. Everyone knows it. Team games often revolve around who uses their VisOps better and whose VisOps dies first. So, what this change does is the walker has to take a risk if it wants to give you all-important vision. It has to be in the middle of the map. It has to be somewhat exposed. Or you can make it safer, but you get less vision. As a trade-off, it has stealth detection in that revealed area because that's a massive nerf and this is giving something back at least. And it fixes the team game problem and it's still excellent in 1v1s to secure the game. Habitat walkers now must lose three coolant nodes to die. This is a significant buff. It means that you have to kill 50% more hard points and you have to attack from different angles. This might be an overbuff, but I think this is a good change for habitat walkers. The main problem with habitat walkers is they're much easier to kill than assemblies. They're still easier to kill than assemblies, but they're significantly harder now with this change than they are before. Small buff, well actually it's a significant buff, but I think it would be healthy. Quantum 3, th now this one is going to be controversial. Uh, people have discussed this at length. My idea is Quantum 3 hardpoint durability removed. Because you have to go Quantum 3 every game, this would open up more build options. Now walkers gain plus 5% damage resistance times their tech level. So if they are 4 in Assault and 2 in Radiation, they will have 30% damage resistance total. It's a nerf to the durability, but by opening up more builds, I think this is a net buff. I think that 60% faster walkers from Assault with 30% damage resistance will be terrifying. I'm not sure if this is possible to do. I assume it is. If it's not, then just a straight number nerf to Quantum 3 will probably be the best way to do it, and then buff Walker's base health. There's a lot of discussion around this. I'm kind of fed up with the discussion already, so people can refer to this video and decide if they want to do this or not. But my point is simply going to be that this is much smoother. It's a smoother damage curve that makes Quantum 3 not mandatory anymore. You can go for a lot of different builds. Detection drone minus one pop space. It's very minor buff. Absolutely tiny. I did debate buffing it so that Reaper drones took one less pop. But I think the hierarchy doesn't have that big a problem with population, honestly. They have walkers. You can't give them the same population as the other races when they have walkers. It just doesn't work. I don't think that's healthy. But a small buff here will mean they can maybe have an extra phase tank or an extra saucer. Range enhancers work on Radiation Cascade. Radiation Cascade sucks. It would be improved if the Quantum 3 thing is changed. But it still sucks. So range enhancers working will make it a lot more viable. I should mention actually finishing this off. This is a net buff for Hierarchy. This is a significant net buff. Overall. Absolutely. Absolutely. Obviously, for Novus, that's a net nerf. Now for Masari. Masari have to go Dark 4 pretty much every game, eventually, unless you really do well with your early Sky Sari. Figment Mines now stun for 3 seconds and slow the movement of affected units by 84% for 2 seconds after. Dark 2 doubles the duration of both of these. Now let me explain. Mines currently stun for 5 seconds, and are doubled by Dark 2. This makes Figments horribly, horribly broken. Massively broken. They're not a balanced unit. Masari needs them to cover their rubbish early game, but it's not a balanced unit. So, I nerfed the stun duration to 3 seconds, and it's doubled by Dark 2 to make it 6. That's enough time to get things done. You can still do chain stuns, you can still do the things you did before, but it's significantly harder, and you might need one or two extra Figments. The movement slow for two seconds after is to give units a chance to react, but will still allow you to get things done. 
The reason why it's 84% instead of 90 is because dark mode projectiles apply a 6% slow for a few seconds. So this makes it a clean 90%. Maybe this is not enough of a nerf. Maybe the movement slow just isn't necessary. But it is a net nerf, absolutely. Um, bugs fixed means that sometimes mines just don't stun things like Mirabelle. I would fix that so that it stuns properly. This is a net nerf, but it might not be enough. But since there is that nerf, matter engine build time minus five seconds. Masari late game is massively broken and the early game is so bad. It's horribly, horribly bad. This will even out that a little bit by giving them a slightly better early game with matter engines building slightly quicker. Antimatter loses 10% of its effectiveness versus DMA. Field inverters, antimatter tanks are a bit too effective against dark. This will still be good against dark mode, but just slightly less effective. Now, addressing the Masari late game, dark super weapon duration increased to 6.5 seconds, and the light super weapon duration increased to 6.5 seconds. It is currently 5 seconds and doubled by the tech 4s. Without Tech 4, the Masari super weapons are really bad. They are not very good. Not as bad as the hierarchies, but they are bad. At Dark 4 or Light 4, they are massively broken. So now, they're slightly better without the Tech 4s, but they're much less broken with the Tech 4s, lasting a total 8 seconds for each. Doesn't make too much of a difference in some situations, but it means you won't one-shot buildings. Sometimes that black hole gen you targeted won't die. It's a significant nerf when it's just not enough to kill things. And I think this is going to be a healthy balance change. Oracles reveal stealth in a small AoE around them and upgrades ping invisible buildings also. Oracles are silly. They on You have to buy one for your mini-map. And they don't do much outside of that until you get the upgrades. They're very clunky in a way. And they should reveal stuff. They're, they're just, they're, they have an eye. Come on. Seer AoE aura increased by 50%. Seers suck. They're very bad. Sentries don't help a lot. And they're very janky to use. This is a buff to Seers because they're a unit you have to build. And when you build them, they just don't do their job that well. You have to pilot them in a sentry a lot of the time, and they're just janky. Now, 50% might be a bit much. I acknowledge that. So maybe this number needs to be tuned down, but I think some sort of increase is warranted. Now for Karos. Karos is the worst hero in the game. Except for maybe the founder. But... The Founder at least has resource griefing, which is so strong it's actually banned in in our community. So he gets a significant buff. Pop costs from 10 to 8. He costs 10 population. Keep in mind that Masari already has reduced pop because they have to have more builders than any other race. 10 is too much. Allied DMA units in an area passively receive 10% less damage in dark and passively burns enemies in an AoE in light mode. That damage is the same as light one buildings. The problem with Karos is he goes in, he does his things, and he dies. Or you have to retreat him early. He has very, absolutely no presence outside of his abilities, which would be fine if his abilities were good but they're just not that good, especially in a game where nearly everything can shoot while it moves. It's just janky, and he's just bad. So now he's got two very minor auras that will be significant. This will definitely make him playable. He will be used, but he won't be broken with this. Now has a ranged attack exclusively for crowns and walkers and air units. He can't hit air which is part of why he's bad. It's dumb that a saucer can just kill him. He has no answer. At least Zessus, who can just die to a saucer or Altea, have incredible abilities to make up for it. It's fine if Zessus dies to saucers because teleport is arguably the best ability in the game. Maybe. Hard to tell. But just does Karos just doesn't have that. 
He does half the damage of his normal hit, so he can do something about crowns, he can do something about air, but he's not as strong. But it just means he doesn't die to a single saucer. Blaze of Glory affects air and crowns, but deals half damage to these and disables the passive AoE damage while active. Again, it solves his issue of sometimes being literally useless, but it's not overpowered. It's just a touch more utility that the character really needs. And with this, Karos will be a playable hero. He might be a bit too good with this, but I doubt it. I think he'd just be very solid. Maybe the auras could get nerfed or just go. But he needs some sort of answer to air and crowns. Train times of most units reduced 10%. Now this will be controversial as well, but with figments being nerfed, Masari need help in the early game. They just do. It's not They're not going to be able to do anything, and Nobus will still crush them in the 1v1. So this is a very small buff, but it means that they will get... Their production can keep up a little bit better. And I'll address balance a bit later after these couple of lines. Peacebringer damage and HP reduced 5%. Peacebringers are a bit too strong, but it's still the Masari late game unit. They still need a good game, well played unit. But this is a very minor nerf to keep them a little bit in line. Maybe not enough of a nerf. Maybe too good with the Karos aura or something, but it's an addressment that I think is a good start especially since their train times won't be reduced, and with the next nerf two lines down. Skylords can now shoot air. They're called Skylords. They're called Sky Lords. They should be able to shoot air. That's the only buff they receive. They might need more, but they should at least be able to shoot air. Balance 2 Reviving Avengers move to Balance 4. This is why I didn't nerf Peacebringers harder. Reviving Avengers is massively broken. It's not balanced, despite it being in the balanced tech tree. It's not okay to have it that accessible and to always be available with Dark 4 or Light 4. So, the reason why Peace Bringers haven't been nerfed as much is Avengers will not be revivable unless you are balanced 4. If you're balanced 4, then Peace Bringers are massively weaker. This. I think is a healthy change. Balance 4 makes super weapon not reset cooldown when mode switching. That makes sense to me. If the Masari super weapon isn't that good, which it would be a bit better with these buffs, but still not ultra amazing. It's not as good as EMP or Black Hole without Dark or Light 4. Actually, it's just not as good as either of those in general, I think, other than the short cooldown maybe. But the cooldown shouldn't reset if you're Balance 4. The whole point of balance is that you can go for either side, and this would be a good buff to balance and make it playable. Matter engines slowly deal damage to surrounding resources. Five per second does not generate money. I will have to explain this one. This is a buff to 1v1. It gives Masari more build space eventually, and it's less money for the opponent to harvest. This is very minor, but it matters. In team games, Masari is a little bit too good. Not so bad in 2v2s, but in 3v3 or higher, Masari gets very, very overpowered. Because there is the more players you add to a game, the more chance that all the money on the map is going to get harvested. That's just a fact. You've got more people acquiring resources, more walkers crushing buildings, more drones hitting things, more armies to fight more resources will get harvested. And when you have a Masari in the game, you generate money for your team by virtue of not sucking it up yourself. If I have 50k's worth of money in my corner, my teammates have 50k more money to access that's in a relatively safe location. That's a very big factor as to why Masari are so strong in team games. That and they have some useful team abilities like Zessus and whatnot, but that's a really huge part of their team game viability, and I didn't want to remove that, but at the same time, this would be a very minor nerf to help with that issue, so they don't generate as many resources for their team. It would promote smarter matter engine placement, and it would reduce, say, some instants that Hierarchy can gather, and it will just generally reduce the overall money that the Masari's team has. 
This would stack per matter engine. And so if you have five matter engines next to a resource dump, it will lose 25 a second, which is never going to happen because you don't want that chain reaction to go off. But it could happen very consistently that somewhere between one and three matter engines would be draining at a resource pile. If it generated money passively from doing that, obviously that's overpowered. But this would be a slight nerf to team games. I think this is a net nerf for Masari. But I think it would balance out their horrible early game and their really broken late game. I think they're still the best late game race in team games with these changes. And with the Novus nerfs, they're probably in line for 1v1s. But they are smoothed out with these changes, especially since Dark 4 won't be as prevalent. Although it would probably still be the preferred tech. There's now actual reasons to go for balance, light. I think that this is overall healthier and a net nerf. Anyway, long video, kind of. Refer to this whenever you want. These are my ideas. Obviously, there's things... I want to just reiterate that there's things I've missed. Some of the things here won't be that good in practice. But overall, I think these are healthy changes that are worth considering. Thank you for watching.